Hey y'all, Joe here with Southern Coastal Cooking. I'm gonna do my first cook on the barrel house cooker and what I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do is some chicken halves. I got two big old chickens at the grocery store on sale and I busted them up, took the backbone out and sliced them in half. I'm gonna show you what I got here. And I got them in the back, the bottom of my briner bucket, just cut in half, that's two whole chickens. So I'm gonna be using this, uh, the briner, ultimate brine container. This is what I used for my turkeys last year. It's great because it's got this lid that screws down there and holds everything underwater. You know, that way you don't have to fill the whole bucket up and waste a bunch of brine and stuff's, you know, floating out. You just screw that lid down there and it holds them down. Anyway, we're going to use their brine mix. That's what we're going to use to brine this thing. And what they call their classic brine mix, and it's basically just salt. Uh, onion powder, you know, sugar, your main ingredients, your brine. It says mixed with two quarts of cold water. I've always liked to make my brines with the apple juice. Um, you know, this apple juice from concentrate stuff's mostly water anyway, but it gives it that extra apple flavor. So I'm gonna put my brine in here and just get it all down there. This is a two quart jug of apple juice, and I put the rest of the apple juice already in there. So we're gonna get all this in here, and then I'll shake it up, mix it together. Well, got it all down in there. Put the cap on here. I've used this briner a couple times. It's by Turkey Tom Products. It just simplifies things so much to me. You know, it's just it's a great deal to use with poultry and stuff. So anyway, I'm gonna so shake this here for a minute or two and get it all mixed up, and we'll put it in there with the turkey halves. I mean, say turkey halves. I mean chicken halves. Daggum. So I've been thinking Turkey Tom Products chicken halves. So. Uh, this is pretty good mixed up here, I think. And this all be good to come. Y'all come on over here. All right, y'all. So we got this pretty good and mixed up. We're about to pour it over the chicken halves. Sorry, I had a little problem with the battery. So let's come over here. And uh, we'll just pour this right here over the chicken. And I'll let y'all see here in just a second. That's basically all we're doing. As we're just covering the chicken there. Now I'm going to bring y'all overhead and let you see how this, uh, this brine works. Let me see here. I have to take you off of the stand here. Mount. Alright. Flip you around. Now look down in there. See the bird? What you do with this. Put this top down here. And you push it down until everybody's underwater. And then you screw it on there and see what that's doing. That's holding everything underwater. That way everything gets nice brine to it. We'll put that in the refrigerator overnight. Hey, y'all. Well, look. I let them sit in the brine all night. And this morning I took them out of the brine bucket. Well, actually what I did is I just poured all the juice off and let them sit in the bottom of the brine bucket. Uh, it's going to be more brine for over about eight hours or so. And look what I got here. We got these beautiful half chickens. I'm gonna take my favorite, one of my favorite chicken rubs is Honey Bee Sweet uh, Peas Blanket Rub. I mean, this stuff is really, really good. It's a bee sweet dry rub, and basically it's got honey powder in it and stuff like that, so it's really, really good for, for chicken and stuff like this, uh, ribs. But what we're gonna do, we're gonna sprinkle these down real good with this bee sweet on both sides. And I'm gonna let these chill for a little bit in the refrigerator while we go get the uh, we get the uh, barrel house cooker rolling. But this is gonna add some good flavor. You know, like I said, this is a good rub here. But we already got a lot of flavor too from um, from that brine last night. Really good stuff. So anyway, let me put this on here. Then we'll let them hang out for a little bit. Y'all, I'm gonna show you how we're gonna light the barrel house cooker. And what we got is some charcoal here in the base. And then I've got about, I wrote a third of that amount over here in the chimney just heating up. And basically what you do is you get your charcoal lit, some of it lit, and then we're going to put it over there on top of that charcoal that's there in the base. Let's let that get lit for a few minutes. Now if that's lit there, I'm going to go ahead and pour some of this lit charcoal right here over the top. And what that's going to do is it's going to help to light this charcoal down here. I'm going to let that go a minute or two, then we're going to put the top on. All right, this is just going to make a perfect light of all this charcoal. Now it's been a couple minutes. We'll go ahead and put a small piece of wood right there. That'll help for a little smoke. And we'll put the top back over the base. Just to so. Now also, make sure you set your elevation down here. I set mine to zero to a thousand 
feet because we're at 325 feet of elevation. So I'm going to open this up, let this smoke for another five, six minutes. All right, so just letting this smoke, letting this do its thing, let it open. I'm going to use this hanging device here to hang hooks on tonight to hang the uh, the chicken half. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in there on the first ring up high. So let that just sit there. Also, I just shut the lid to the barrel house. Uh, it's up to about 300 degrees. When it gets up to about 350, we're going to put the chicken on. And I'm going to show you how we're going to do it inside when we get it ready. So what you do with the, uh, the barrel house cooker is with the meat, it comes with these little hooks. And see how I've cooked, hooked these hooks for these hangers through the chicken? And I hooked it up through the, the white meat side because you want to let the dark meat hang down closer to the fire. This is going to cook a little bit faster. Um, this is the way you want to get it started. So we're going to hang those here in the cooker and let them cook away y'all it's gonna be really cool y'all just hold bear with me just for a second let me flip you around let me show you how this is gonna be done remember what you're trying to do is cook this meat vertically here but still very evenly so I'm gonna open this up and we hang it on that little piece that I showed you that I put in right in the beginning so Take one of them here, move it back just like that, give it a hang. Watch your fingers. Another one over here, move it back, give it a hang. There we go. And you won't, don't want your stuff touching. And here's another thing they said if, if you cannot at all help it, don't have your birds or your meat or whatever you're cooking touching. You don't want necessarily touching the sides either. So, just kind of move it around just a little bit. And let's put this bad boy in here, just like that. Last one. And I'm going to bring you all over here and let you see what I'm talking about, what it looks like. Yes, here, see everything just hanging. And I'm going to add one more little piece of smoke wood that can fall down there. And we're going to shut this lid here. And that's going to let everything cook right there in the barrel house, y'all. Really cool. I'm going to come back and check it maybe that 30, 45 minutes. Already right, starting to smoke. All right, y'all. So we've been rolling here for about an hour. And for what I'm reading, the research I'm doing here on uh, how long it takes here in the barrel house, I'm looking at about two hours, rolling about 300 or so like this with these chicken halves. And I'll tell you what. I mean, the, the smell and the smoke and everything and the temperature, it's, it's really, this is really nice. I like this. And, um, you know, really constant temperature too I mean, right about 275 or so let's say this thing's rolling um, you could probably I want to say you could probably open the vents up at the bottom a little bit more you know I've got them adjusted for my elevation you know I think the uh, default adjustment and this is just me talking with something they told me but if you set it for your elevation you're running uh, let's say 275 in the cooker so if you would open up a little bit more, I bet you would probably run a little bit higher if, if you want to do that way. But a 275 is fine with me, right at about 300. Um, if y'all want to come over here with me, we can, I'll tell you what, no, let's don't even check it. Let's let it just keep smoking, uh, just just doing its thing here, because, I mean, that's looking great, y'all. But y'all, it's been about an hour and 30 minutes, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the temp on these birds. and just see, they got some wonderful color on them. So let's see what we're looking like here. Let's see. One. About 159. Pretty good there. Just check one of these other ones and see. I'm going to check just right down the brass mate. That was about 174. So looking pretty good. Let me bring here up bring y'all over and let you just see I mean they're, they're fabulous looking birds I'm gonna go ahead and see if these birds are done kind of look at them actually I may do something a little bit different with them here in just a second let that, let that smoke clear here a second get my gloves on oh yeah look at that juice oh my gosh they're so pretty and they've got a little tool apparently comes with this that you can uh, pick this stuff up with as well. 
That is gorgeous stuff right there. Let's get these inside for a minute. Let's take a look, y'all. Bro, oh, this chicken looks wonderful. I took it. I used my javelin thermometer here, and you get one of these actually with the deluxe as well. Tested temperature wise, great. And, uh, man, I just want to cut into one of these beauties. They, they look so fabulous. Let's, uh, let's do that, y'all. Let's, let's just cut into one. You could sauce this chicken and, and, and do it on the grill as well, but to me, when I'm first testing out something, I like to do it without it. sauce. You can dip it in the sauce always, but I want to just see what kind of skin you can get. Just a real, real taste here. So what we're gonna do, y'all? Gosh, this is nice. Go ahead and slice some of this meat off of here. You know, use one of these uh, Zen knives. Remember, I got from that. Uh, oh man, Zen Japanese VG10. Damascus blades, and I'll put all this in the description box where you can get it. But let's just slice a little bit of this, this chicken off of here. Look at that! Oh my gosh, y'all! Well, it's absolutely incredible. We we'll come through here. I want to remove this to where I get that beautiful skin. You know what I mean? Or we can slice through here and just uh, just take some of that skin with that uh, honey bee sweet. You can find those guys that uh, Pig's Blanket Rub on Facebook. I'll put a link to them too. I mean, they make some absolutely wonderful rubs. Look at this, y'all. Oh my gosh. Hope y'all can see this. Just make sure. Oh yes, sir. How juicy everything is. I mean, look at the juice. That's excellent. So what we're gonna do here, I'm just gonna slice a little bit of this here. This chicken breast, I mean, right there. Where you've got the uh, skin on it. So you had a super sharp knife or something like that. And I mean, that's gonna be outstanding, y'all. Look at that. that. That barrel house cooker, I mean, that, it really did it. And look at the juice going out on the protein board here. T calls. Look at that, y'all. That's gorgeous. Let's take a minute, just check that out. I'm gonna taste it. Alright, so let's taste this here. Look at that. Look at the juice. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Give it a taste. First try using the barrel house cooker. How juicy that is. Oh my gosh, it's a perfectly cooked chicken there. Mm -mm -mm. I'm going to try that. That's magnificent. I'm going to try something simple for my first cook. Man, this was simple and delicious. You know, seriously. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Outstanding. Anyway, y'all please uh, like my video, sub my channel, go check out this place in the description box, uh, Barrel House Cooker and, and, and Zen Knives and all that good stuff. And Thank y'all so much. Y'all please have a good one. God bless. Y'all keep tuning in. Got some more videos to come. Hey, yeah, y'all, I'll tell you what. I can't wait to tell old Pulster Master about this. He's going to have a fit on how juicy this chicken is. And just perfectly cooked, man. It's so easy. Anyway, thanks again, y'all. I'm going to try out this um, barrel house cooker. Oh, yeah.